It is Monday, April 1st, April Fool's Day, 2019, and I'm thinking about getting a picture of the planet Mars tonight. Now, if you watch this channel regularly, you know I don't normally photograph the planets, but I've been inspired by some of the shots I saw on Twitter earlier today from other parts of the world because Mars is really close to the Pleiades star cluster right now. So this is gonna be deep into the west and it isn't gonna last long. And I'm gonna to have to get out of the backyard to photograph it properly because as you know, I've got a huge tree in my backyard in the west. So I'm gonna to have to get around that and I'm gonna to go to one of the surrounding parks to get an open view. And the uh, Ioptron Sky Tracker camera mount so I can get some track shots at probably about 60 seconds, maybe less. I don't need much. Both Mars is very bright, of course, but so is Pleiades. So I'll be using a 24 to 105 millimeter camera lens on a stock DSLR camera. And uh, I'll probably bring this guy with me. Hey buddy, you wanna get a picture of Mars? To control the imaging session on this DSLR, a Canon 7D, I'm gonna use a remote shutter release cable that lets me control the exposures and the shutter using this little cable here without touching the camera. So that's great for not creating any extra shake in the images that can blur the stars and the sky and as well as automate exposures and go longer than the default of 30 seconds on the DSLR. So I'm thinking 30 seconds, sorry, 60 seconds at ISO 400 should work out well for this, but we'll have to get out there and see. It's getting darker now, so I think I'm gonna leash Rudy up and we're gonna head out to the park. Rudy, you wanna go for a walk? <gasps> you wanna go for a walk? Yeah, let's go for a walk. So I'm just set up at a schoolyard kind of behind my house because it's got a much bigger opening to the western sky and uh, it's a bit breezy over here that's why I've got you placed behind a wall in kind of a weird spot. Camera's actually sitting in the snow uh, but I should be able to see Mars any minute now. Uh, it's very bright and that's going to give away the location for Pleiades as well so I'll be able to frame the star cluster and the planet up nicely and uh, I'll get polar aligned because Polaris should be out any second now as well. So I'm going to get set up. When it comes to using these little camera trackers like this, it's all about stability. So as you can see, I've got the tripod set real low to the ground for maximum stability. There's no reason it needs to be standing tall. I've got it planted nice and low, low center of gravity. Second is balance, which isn't so much of an issue right now because I've got a lightweight DSLR and lens on there as opposed to a telescope, which is what the sky tracker is meant for. And third, polar alignment. A wide angle lens is going to be very forgiving in terms of this, but you want to be close and that's why there's a polar finder scope on the sky tracker and the idea is to uh, align it properly with a north celestial pole, which I will do with the aid of a mobile app that I use that tells me where Polaris should be. It's pretty darn cold out here and just waiting for it to get dark now, but uh, I don't see Mars yet. Okay, there we go. I can see Sirius. You can probably just see it to the left there and I can now see Mars. It's noticeably red, it's in the west, and I should be seeing Pleiades pop up shortly after, star cluster. So it's pretty interesting the scale and the distance between these objects because obviously Mars is much closer to Earth than Pleiades is uh, because Pleiades is a star cluster light years away and Mars is a planet in our solar system. Okay, so kind of a funny story. I'm back in the backyard because I realized that it was high enough where if I set up in a certain spot in the far end of the yard where I call Dog Poop Alley, I can see Mars and Pleiades and I can capture it from the comfort of my fenced backyard. I heard some creepy noises coming from somewhere and it was a bit annoying to hold on to the leash with Rudy out there. So I'm back at home, I'm set up here and I have found Mars and Pleiades. What I was looking at the first time was actually the star Aldebaran. So I'm sure I would have wasted some time farting around with that first too. So 
Polar aligned, found Mars, the real Mars. Time to shoot it. Here's a look at the back of the camera and I just wanted to show you how I'm focusing this. Mars is bright enough to focus on because it's like basically a bright star. So if I zoom in once, zoom in twice, there it is on the screen and I can do my fine focus with the, the camera lens focus ring and then get that just right. Turn live view off. Back to my shutter release cable. Before I start the imaging sequence I'll just take a few test shots where I just hold the button down in bulb mode and it's going down. I'm at ISO 400 right now and I'll take a 10 second shot. And there's a little Mars and the Pleiades in there. And now I know that I've got it centered, I can zoom in, get a closer shot and take a few test shots like that. My shots are firing away and it is framed up just perfectly. I really lucked out with the focal length of the camera lens I chose. So it's a 24 to 105 lens and I've got it fully zoomed to 105 millimeter and it's just framed up perfectly. Mars, Pleiades right there. So it's firing away 60 second shots at ISO 400 right now. Really exciting, I never photograph planets and uh, I mean this is a wide focal length. I haven't gone deep on them in a long time but I will soon. Let's get my wife's potentially underwhelming reaction to seeing Mars and Pleiades and if she knows what it is with binoculars. I'll get her out here. Ash? Yeah? Can you come here and bring the binoculars? I need you to look at something and tell me what it is. There's snow on the ground. Oh, just, you can skip over that. True. Just a big, one big jump. Okay. Where am I looking? Oh, I see it. Oh, you see it? Yeah. So what is it? Mars. Does it look like Mars? No. Does it look like a red planet? Well, it's red. Okay, it is it Mars. It looks like it's blinking. Because you're looking between the uh, twigs and the tree. <laughs> you're moving, so it's like... There you go. And what else do you see next to it? Uh... To the right of it. The little dipper? It kind of does look like a little dipper, but you know what that is. Uh, Orion? The, <laughs> the most famous star cluster. You know this one. It's an open cluster in Taurus. The, the blank star cluster. The Seven Sisters. Pleiades! <laughs> Astrophotography can be a complex hobby, but it doesn't have to be. You can also enjoy it with just a DSLR, a camera lens on a tripod. I happen to have a tracking mount which gives me a little bit of an advantage this time but you can enjoy a night like this without a camera tracker that's for sure and it's just a stock DSLR camera and a 105 millimeter lens so I hope you enjoy the final image at the end of this video I love nights like this where it's just a spur-of-the-moment idea and I hope to have a lot more of them clear skies <laughs>